If you've been following this channel as a PC gamer or creator, then you may have noticed that it's been absolutely packed with super high-end gaming pre-built reviews lately. The cream of the crop most expensive PCs. Today I've got something more for the average gamer without loads of money. In this video, we're going to be diving into more mid-range PC for you gamers and creators on a budget. This is my honest and unbiased review of the Skytech Azure 2. In this video, I'm gonna quickly zip you through the unboxing and what's included, take you through some very thorough gaming and creator benchmarks, talk about the design and build quality, the internals, thermals, fan noise, overall ease of use, pricing breakdowns, and comparing it to the competition, as well as my top pros and cons. Now, if you get discouraged about choosing this PC after anything that I say in this video, just keep watching because I'm also gonna be showing you some alternative PCs that I recommend for every budget. If you watch this entire video, I guarantee by the end, you will know if this PC or one of the others that I mentioned are right for you or not. But if you still have any questions after watching this entire video, just shoot me a comment. And if you're publicly subscribed, I guarantee a personal response. Now the specs for this PC may sound pretty tame, but because it has a 13th gen CPU and 4000 series GPU, it actually left last year's top spec PCs in the dust. This model includes the latest Gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti GPU and 13th gen i5 13600K CPU with 5200 megahertz DDR5 RAM. Now let's jump back to about a week ago and check out the unboxing. First, what we've got included in this small box is our SkyTech gaming keyboard. The quality and comfortability of the keys, I would say is pretty average as far as standard membrane keyboards go. On the back of the box, they've actually got a pretty handy image showing you all the features and your hotkey functions over on the other side. And then underneath this top phone, we've got this little folder that includes a quality control certificate, giving you some peace of mind on all the testing that was done before it was shipped, a troubleshooting guide, and a maintenance guide, and then one more tiny little box. In here, we've got our included SkyTech gaming mouse. The clicks and scroll wheel both felt pretty average, and after several hours of gaming, I can say it was pretty comfortable as well. They also included this bag with an extra custom keycap, an extra SATA cable for providing power to any extra hard drives that you might want to add in the future, an extra CPU mounting bracket, your power cable, and two external antennas for Wi-Fi. Once you get all that unboxed, you'll just need to take off the side panel and remove the internal protection foam that they included to keep the internals from getting damaged in shipping. Now design-wise, this PC uses the new Montec Sky 2 case, which is a very well-built, sleek-looking mid-tower design. Near the front, we've got two 120mm intake fans, which pull fresh, cool air from outside of the case, where it then picks up heat generated from the components across the motherboard, but mainly from this GPU, where it then gets sucked out through this rear exhaust fan. Now the heat that's generated from our i5-1300K CPU, that actually gets transferred via this Enermax cooler block up through these tubes into a radiator here at the top, where the heat is then spread out and then blown out out with these two very powerful 120 millimeter exhaust fans. Those two fans also help pull a lot of the heat from the rest of the components out of the case. And it did do a pretty nice job as I'll show you here once we get to the thermals. And next to our CPU is our 5200 megahertz Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 RAM. We've got two sticks of 16 gigabytes for a total of 32, which is plenty for any game that you're gonna play. And underneath our CPU is our one terabyte SSD, which is our main drive that our operating system is installed on. This one is an MSI M37 and we'll show you the speeds that we got for that here in a sec. And beneath that SSD is the most important and most expensive part of this PC, our Gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti GPU. This GPU has a pretty cool looking design and it is massive. Basically the same size as a Founders Edition 4090, just slightly thinner, quite a bit lighter than that one though. And as you can see, after we remove the GPU, we have another SSD slot here for more high speed storage. And then whipping around to the back, we've got even more storage expandability with two two and a half inch SATA SSD slots and on the bottom left two bays for traditional three and a half inch mechanical hard drives and then lastly in the other corner to power all of this a deep cool 850 watt 80 plus gold certified power supply for the ports on the top we've got a power button and your LED button for quickly cycling through the RGB effects two USB 3.0 ports a headphone and microphone jack and a USB C port and on the back two more USBs and a PS2 port for older keyboards and mice an HDMI 
and two USB 2.0 ports, a BIOS flashback, a super fast USB A and USB C port, both capable of 10 gigabits per second, two more USBs, and an RJ45 Ethernet port, and at the bottom, a microphone, front speaker, and line in. And then just a little lower on the back of our graphics card, an HDMI 2.1 and three display ports. For the software, SkyTech doesn't include any fancy hardware monitoring dashboards or controls for fan or thermal profiles or performance profiles, but it does include software called Signal RGB, which gives you control over your RGB animations and allows you to customize based on what game you're playing. For performance controls, as you can see here within the BIOS, there is a bit that you can tweak if you're a more advanced gamer that wants to push your computer a little further. Only mess with these settings if you really know what you're doing though. When it came to the fan noise, these were my results after testing each of the main fan profiles from within the BIOS. In quiet mode, this is what it sounded like at 44.2 decibels. 45.5 for performance mode. And at full speed, 45.9. As you can see within this graph, it was on the higher end compared to the others, but for me personally, it didn't really bother me. These fans did cool the PC pretty efficiently though. You can tell on our thermal imaging time lapse from computer off to full on gaming that much of the heat bunches up over here against the glass right next to our GPU. And then removing the side panel reveals another typical hotspot right next to the CPU. Both of these temps were pretty low compared to the others that I reviewed. Thankfully, this computer does an excellent job getting rid of heat out the back exhaust fan and two top exhaust fans. And this translated very well in every game that we tested. These were our CPU temps for several different games at 4K. As expected, this i5 is way, way cooler than the i9s and the other current gen PCs we've tested. I'm pretty positive that you will never, ever have any thermal throttling here. Same thing with this 4070 Ti GPU temps here, well below throttling limits. Then comparing the average temperatures of all these games against the last 13 PCs that were reviewed, it revealed this PC to be the absolute lowest CPU temperature here at 1080p and the third lowest GPU temps right after the Corsair Vengeance A7 300 and the newest HP Omen 45L. But when moving up to 4K gaming, this PC was the overall king with the lowest temperatures by far for both the CPU and the GPU. Cooler than any PC that I've ever reviewed. Significantly lower than the last two Skytech PCs that I reviewed at the end of last year. All right, now for the performance and gaming benchmarks. This is one of the most important parts of this review, second only to the price to performance ratios, and we'll get to that here in a sec. For Geekbench 5, we got the highest single core score that I've ever seen, but it was just under all of last year's pre-builds with i9s and 3090s when it came to the multi-core score. For Cinebench R23, which simulates its 3D rendering power, we got a multi-core score of 23,858 and a single core score of 1,959. The single core score was on par with all the top spec PCs from last year, but the multi-core score was just a tad bit lower. Another helpful test for you 3D renderers is the V-Ray benchmark. And these were our CUDA, RTX, and overall V-Ray performance scores. These GPU scores were all higher than all of last year's top spec PCs. This basically demonstrates that this computer was way faster than those more expensive computers when it came to real-time viewport rendering and high polygon 3D modeling. However, the overall V-Ray performance score underperformed when it came to the longer CPU-based rendering. And for you 3D creators that use Blender, here we got a CPU score of 329 and a GPU score of 7,306. Again, this 4070 Ti GPU trumped last year's 3090 GPUs when it came to real-time viewport rendering. And just like the V-Ray results, our Blender CPU score showed it to be just under what last year's top spec models could do, which is actually still pretty impressive considering how inexpensive this computer is compared to how expensive those computers are. And the last benchmarks for creators before we get into gaming are the Pugin benchmarks. For DaVinci Resolve, we got 2213. Not too bad compared to the rest at this price point. Adobe Premiere 987, again, just slightly lower than last year's best. Adobe Photoshop 1516, very close to this year's best, surprisingly, and actually faster than the higher spec Alienware Aurora R15. And then After Effects 1296, a pretty decent score compared to the others here as well. Now for 3D Mark, which is a great benchmark used to determine a computer's overall game ability, we got an overall score of 21,625 and a CPU score of 17,547. The least powerful 
powerful of the latest gen pre-builds that I've tested here so far, but also way less expensive and still faster than the best of the best from last year. Now for the main drive, the SSD that everything is stored on, I got speeds of nearly 2.5 gigabytes read and 1.9 gigabytes write. This is actually pretty underwhelming compared to the others. That's less than half the speed that I got with the other pre-builds that I've tested this year. Not a very expensive upgrade though. Actual gaming benchmarks are what really matters when it's all said and done though. These were our average FPS results we got for several games at their highest preset settings in HD. It's actually pretty impressive how well it did compared to the other more expensive top tier pre-builds that have tested this year. Here you can see when averaging all the FPS for all these games together at 1440p that it was considerably less than this year's top tier, but check this out. Still faster than every single top tier PC that I reviewed last year. That is insane. People who bought those PCs spent $4,000 last year, and this PC is better at half the price. Then when moving up to 4K gaming, the gap between this computer and this year's best got a little bit larger, but still better than last year's best. Your budget and the price to performance ratios are what really matter though, and we're gonna get to that here in a sec. If $2,100 is still too much for your wallet, don't worry, I'm about to give you recommendations for every budget. If you can afford $2,100, then this is a pretty good price for a computer with these specs. You can see here in my price to performance ratio chart that for 1080p gaming, it has the second best value with an incredibly low dollar per FPS ratio. And then check this out. At 1440p, it has the number one lowest cost per FPS out of all the computers that I've ever reviewed. And at 4K, it separated itself even further from the pack with an even larger dollar per FPS gap compared to all the others. Very impressive. Now, if you're at a different price point, these are my recommendations for every budget. I've also got links down below in the comments and description for all of them. If you can afford the best of the best at that $4,000 price point and love gaming at the very highest resolutions, I would go with that HP Omen 45L that I reviewed. That PC has the highest performance out of all the gaming PCs that I've tested so far. At the $3,000 level, I would go with this version of the CyberPower PC Gamer Supreme with a 13th Gen i9 and 4090 GPU. With my experience with CyberPower PCs though, they do tend to get a little hot, but I personally don't mind a hotter PC if it's going to squeeze more power and give me more bang for my buck. If that PC is still too much, then this same version of that PC with a 4080 rather than a 4090 is only $2,600. For those with a budget closer to $2,000, then this PC that I just reviewed, the Skytech Azure 2, this is actually what I recommend for that price point. Now closer to $1,500, this version of the HP Omen 25L with the Ryzen 7 and 3070. And at just over $1,000, this version of the CyberPower Gamer Master with the Ryzen 5 and 3060. And for under $1,000 at $800, I'd go with this version of that computer with the 6500 XT GPU. This is the bare minimum that I would recommend for decent gaming though. You definitely won't be able to have high graphics settings on that PC if you want a decent frame rate. Now for my top pros and cons. My number one con for this PC is the rendering performance. That was the only performance area that I was a little disappointed in for a computer with these specs. And it was the only area that it did not consistently rise above last year's best. And number two was the fan noise. While this wasn't a huge deal for me personally, I do need to mention it as a con because it was a bit louder than average. And I know that some people watching this are going to have an issue with that. My top pros for this computer, number one is that pricing. At $2,100, this really is a pretty good deal for a computer with these specs. And with it having the number one lowest dollar per FPS ratio, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. Number two were the thermals. I knew that the thermals would be lower than the top tier PCs with i9s and 4090 GPUs, but I didn't realize it would be this much cooler. And number three is upgradability. I tested a 4090 in this PC and it fit pretty well with still a lot of room left. So if you ever want to go bigger, you've got that option. And because it uses a modular power supply, it's not going to be hard to upgrade that along with it as well. Overall, I'd say that this is a pretty impressive and powerful PC with a great design and excellent thermals. And I do recommend it for average budget gamers looking for a mid-range PC. I still cannot wrap my mind around the fact that this PC is better than last year's top tier PCs. Now, if you do decide to purchase this PC or one of the others that I mentioned, then please remember to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. And it's actually a major factor in keeping this channel going and getting better and better for you. I'd also like to personally thank all my current members for their monthly contributions to this channel. I really appreciate you guys. Every little bit helps. And remember, every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel in some way or filled out the form in the description. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to stay up to date with that. 
as well as staying up to date with all of my latest gaming PCs. And the winner for this week is... Alex Thomas. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.